Hello, hello, and welcome back. Uh, sorry, I haven't been around for about a week and a half, but I've been super busy helping my girlfriend study with for her exams, and I've uh, been ill and stuff like that. So I will be getting back to a more regular schedule of a, probably a video every two days so I can get something of reasonable substance. Um, I'm queuing a lot because I'm trying to push my rating as high as I possibly can for like the end of the season. Um, so I'll probably do a lot of TSG breakdowns if you guys like it against all various different comps that are on the ladders and then also I'll continue with the arena um, positioning breakdown. I've kind of pulled back off the class breakdown stuff because I don't think it's necessarily that useful um, and like it doesn't seem to like really give anything to anyone. I mean it's, it can be useful for someone trying to pick their stuff but um, there's better stuff to do really I think with my time at the moment so first of all we're gonna get into this and this is Cupid um, it is everywhere on the ladders it's really strong it's quite easy to play um, what's different to this Cupid which um, you will often see is like marksman hunters are often there which uh, they have a uh, quite a bit more CC and the damage is absolutely ridiculous and uh, the Rep Paladin's damage is just massive to begin with. And that's the main counter that comes against TSG because they can go um, the Spinning Hammer talent that replaces the Blade of Justice. So it would just AOE damage down the TSG and sort of just uh, just wreckers. Um, and then also the Priest can purge all the hots off and things like that. So it's very difficult for us to play. But what we'll see here is we're going to be going after the Hunter. We're going to be gripping in the Priest because then the Pally comes with us anyway. And that's where we're going to be getting our triple shockwaves. And that's where we're going to create pressure. We also need to bear in mind that we're trying to stop this Priest from getting fears to get that additional um, crowd control on our Druid. We stopped that a couple of times. And it's like it actually helps us out massively. So we managed to get a quick setup on really strong positioning for us to begin with and we get the restun onto the priest and we just start unloading damage and uh the hunter gets his trap off it's not a big deal because we're already pretty ready and um <laughs> right there we get turtle we get turtle we've gotten something big out of them it's crucial and what we did we did our setup and we got the restun now see here because we have um there's a couple things that i'm going to mention right here is we got the setup uh, the, the ret's going to be bursting using his wings now, so we need to peel the ret. And by peeling the ret, we, we, like, I'm, I'm saving my fear, so I can, like, fear him during his wings to, like, try and kite him out a little bit. I, we played against a lot of Cupid, and I was trying to use my fear offensively against the priest and stuff like that. It ended up really just not being the best option, but peeling the ret's damage and also just kind of... Uh, in this scenario we managed to get the priest in it which is the best if you can do that but if you just fear away the rat and reduce the damage you're going to have a bit more sustainability and be able to push a bit more so we got the triple shockwave so it's going to be on a shorter um uh cooldown but we also need to take into account that um we had the restun out of the dk from the remorseless winter stun now here's the main issue um you can end up DRing on the own stun chain that you started before, which happens here, which is really crucial that you need to not do that because we would have had loads more pressure and been able to peel massively again because I get greedy. I'm like, okay, I know that the pets had stacked up, the rat is stacked up, and the priest is stacked up. It would have created so much pressure onto the rat, maybe got the rat's bubble. This would have been good had it not been like one, like one maybe two seconds left of the of the, uh, the stun DR, I could have just waited and then maybe gripped in and we could have gone again. But now I have to wait another 20 seconds, although it's not like the longest cooldown, it's still annoying and we don't get a proper setup which allows them to start getting some serious pressure on us. Now we go after, we, I stay on the Hunter, the DK has to kite because the Ret's in wings and there's just a lot of damage here. And we see the Priest coming in right there. See the priest coming in tight on this on this box here to try and get the CC on because there's a lot of pressure onto our um, onto our DK and also that the, he wants to fear him while he's on Incarn and on this map you can be feared down into these holes which is absolutely awful. So uh, I see the priest coming in <clears throat> for um, the fear. I call it out to the druid so he knows that um, the priest coming in for the fear and I see them stack up and I um, go for. I go for the shockwave and hopefully try and get a triple. Unfortunately, I don't, which puts it on the long CD, which can be bad, but it does peel the Rets damage a bit. 
and also gives some CC onto the priest and kind of solidifies him in an awful position. And it means he can't get um, his fear off. And it also, because I've let the druid know, he just pulls back and uh, cyclones the priest because the hunter is line of sight of him and he can't range kick him. And he knew that the red didn't have a kick either. So the priest gets cycloned and he's starting to get into it in a bit of a chain while the their hunter is taking some serious damage and that gets through one of the other huge Im um, immunities that this team has because not only do they have um the the turtle from the uh from the hunter they also have bop which nullifies my damage entirely and for the most part a lot of the uh, dk's damage although some of it will be magic damage but you're not really going to kill somebody um and then there's also pain sup and a whole lot of uh, priest cooldowns, which is pretty major in this. So we're just we're making sure that we keep getting something with every like stun that we have and keeping the pressure on because momentum, especially with cleaves, is huge. So as soon as we see the immunity go on to the, the hunter, we swapped onto the ret just to create some pressure. So he has to put some shields onto the ret, put some healing into the ret, waste a bit of mana, and then we swap immediately back to the hunter as soon as we can. And we're looking to do a next setup on my shockwave and see you see here we're gripping in this is because i've communicated to the dk there's a long cooldown on shockwave and that he might as well just do it anyway because he'll be able to get his root and then um get a remorseless wound to stun on him and so we get a huge amount of damage there and this also puts the hunter in a really vulnerable position the water is just about to come down he's going to be line of sight from the priest it's kind of we didn't plan it that way but it's very convenient positioning for us to be in because the their priest is now stuck in the middle our druid can line of sight um so it's hard for the hunter to get a trap on him even though he won't be going for a trap because he is very low and um it will also be difficult for the ret to get his stun off and then that's where we just land the kill. And you see the priest still going for fears, still really trying to get there. And by the, by, by the positioning of our druid behind these boxes, he had to really use stuff to get there and just let his hunter die. Because there was no, there was there's very little he could probably do. Maybe he had paints up left or had some heals for him that he could have gone. But he was because he couldn't get the fear on all game, he was really trying to push to get it to try and create some pressure so he could kill our DK. When we're looking at this um this lineup specifically, <clears throat> if uh, what what you need to take into account is okay, you need to look at what the ret's playing, what the hunter's playing, and how they're trying to play in general. Because uh, if you look at the ret and he's not playing the spinning hammer talent, there's a potential that you can go ret if you're having issues connecting onto the hunter or uh, gripping in the the healers and stuff like that. Uh, if you're getting kited too much or you're being dragged into awful positions, you can go the ret if he's not doing that because it's going to be a significant amount of cleave damage that won't be there because he's not AoEing the two of you. And also rets are still really good targets to go, but the only reason you don't go rets is because the DPS is insane when you go on on them just because uh, as a cleave because you're just going to get hit massively. Um, uh, we don't have to necessarily do that much kicking of the priest because we don't swap priests. Priests can be swapped if they use their pains up and their, their barrier. They use stuff for free on um, the, the hunter, especially if um, they get gripped in, you lay down a shockwave and uh, he puts a whole lot of stuff on the hunter just as you guys go. And then um, he pops his turtle because he's scared as well, and you just immediately swap on to the the priest who has nothing while the turtles and while while the hunters and turtle really just rinse through and maybe kill him there. But then you can also swap back to hunter because he's going to be vulnerable again because his major uh, cooldowns up. What also you need to take into account in this comp as well is not only the bop utility from the rat, but you also have. Um, the sanctification so you can he can sank uh the priest out of fears and stuns which is really crucial you need to have that the ret in the shockwave because if you get him in the shockwave then like he can't sank because he's stunned and also if you're fearing the ret to peel damage which is a really good way of peeling damage especially against this team because if um you see the priest coming in close for a for trying to get his fear off because he needs to run through to get to the druid or he's just been gripped in and he's kind of running out so you can fear get rid of the the rat and the 
the priest after they've already taken the AOECC and just keep laying on to the hunter and really create some pressure and then um, force force the bops and force like the re uh, play defensive. That's the only really way you can do it, try and get some pressure. Um, don't feel bad if you're losing his TSG to Cupid a lot. It is a really, really hard counter and it can be really, really difficult to play against. Um, this is at, yeah, 2300. Um, there's a lot of teams queuing at the, in this bracket. Um, playing Cupid, a lot of it's Marksman, which is, I find, a little bit more difficult to deal with because they can kite us a bit more and uh, they have more crowd control and also the damage is absolutely ridiculous. Um, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, again, I'm going to be trying to get more regular with these videos. One every two days or something like that. A lot more TSG to come because I'm playing a lot of it on the ladders. I'm going to try and stream it a bit here and there, but sometimes I get some frame rate issues and stuff like that. So I'll give it a go, especially if people want to watch it. Um, I'm still uh, willing to look through people's uh, uh, replays and stuff like that. I had some people ask me if I'm still doing that. Still doing that. Um, I've got uh, in my Discord, there is a channel where you can kind of go link me your VODs and I'll look through them for free and give you feedback on like up to about two hours because then it's like, it starts wasting a lot of my time. Well, not wasting it. It starts using up a lot of my time, which I need to edit. And I also need to practice for, for threes. Anyway, I appreciate you all. And I hope this was an enjoyable video or informative in some way. Uh, let me know what you want to see. If you have any questions in the comments in the discord, um, uh, peace out guys. And I'll see you next time. Hello there and thanks for watching my video. Make sure to subscribe if you like what you see and like if you liked it, dislike if you don't. Please comment to uh, let me know what you want to see in the future and uh, make sure to uh, come tune in and watch me on Twitch. I'm live from 12 a.m. or 12 midnight uh, GMT for normally about six hours playing a whole bunch of games. Hopefully I'll see you there.